Rachel, if you'd like to share your screen now and we'll hand over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jean. Um, I hope the presentation is displaying OK there. Yes, it is. Thank you. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> So, and welcome to all our participants. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Uh, we're all delighted to be here and to tell you a little bit about our profession as radiographers and also about our courses in UCD. Um, my name is Rachel, as uh, Jean has mentioned, and I've been lecturing in UCD for about 10 years now. I suppose the first question I want to address is what exactly is a radiographer? And, um, what do you do if you study radiography? What is your career going to look like? Um, the degree that we, both degrees we offer, the undergraduate and graduate entry degrees, are diagnostic radiography degrees uh, to train and become a career registered diagnostic radiographer. And a diagnostic radiographer is a medical professional who um, is involved in imaging the body. So we produce images of all different kinds using lots of different technologies. And those images can be used for a diagnosis of illness or injury, for a treatment of, um, or it can be, images can sometimes be used to guide a treatment or an intervention, uh, for instance, in an operation or uh, a catheter-based cardiac intervention. And also we will image patients to follow up after their treatment um, or, and follow up on how they're doing and how their pathology or injury is hopefully healing. I just want to clarify the difference between a diagnostic radiographer, which is our degree in UCD, and a therapeutic radiographer. A therapeutic radiographer or a radiotherapist is another branch of radiography that's involved in delivering radiation treatments for cancer treatment, so radiotherapies. Um, there is a degree to become a radiotherapist or a, radio a therapeutic radiographer in Ireland, but it's offered by Trinity College Dublin or a graduate entry through University College Cork. Um, we do not offer a therapeutic radiography degree in UCD. Um, so in some other European countries, the professions train together, but in Ireland, they do not. So just to have a disambiguation there. The other one that is often confused with a diagnostic radiographer is a radiologist. And a radiologist is actually a medical doctor who has then gone on to specialize in imaging, radiological imaging. So diagnostic radiographers are people who acquire images of the body and radiologists are people who uh, presently at least uh, interpret those images and who carry out um, interventions under image guidance. So radiographers are in charge of producing all the images and radiologists uh, then either read or diagnose from those images and um, carry out the, the interventions. Okay, so to become a radiologist, you would have to study medicine and then go on to specialize afterwards, whereas you can study diagnostic radiography directly with us. Radiography is a very varied profession. Um, there's many different aspects to it. On one hand, it's a very patient-facing profession. You're dealing directly with patients as part of their care every day, hands-on. And of course, you need to be trained in healthcare and in uh, in patient care for that. But on the other side, we've got the technological side of radiography. And radiography involves working with multi million euro state of the art equipment to produce images of the body. So it's that marriage of technology and science with patient facing frontline medical care that appeals very much to, to many of our staff and our students. Uh, it's a very blended profession. Radiographers are also um, unique in, in many ways, uh, but they're one thing that's particularly enjoyable, in my opinion, about radiography is that you will get to see patients of just about every type as a radiographer. Imaging is required for just about every medical specialty, and you'll have a very diverse patient cohort ranging from antenatal care, potentially, or neonatal care, all the way through to geriatric and end of life care. You have the people who are very gravely ill in ICU or with very significant life-threatening illnesses like cancer or cardiovascular disease through to the minor injuries, slips, trips, and falls um, that we would 
also need to provide imaging for. So you've got a very, very diverse patient cohort and you'll get to experience lots of different aspects of, um, of the medical environment. I mentioned that radiographers work very much with different types of technology. I'll talk you through some of the different types of images that radiographers are involved in producing shortly. Um, but any time that you've had an image taken of your body, there's a very good chance that a radiographer was involved in producing it. So an X-ray is a very common type of medical image that people associate with radiographers, but radiographers are also involved in CT or CAT scanning, in MRI scanning, in ultrasound, and in many other different kinds of imaging also. Just to talk through a few of those, here are some examples of X-ray images. So X-ray images on the left here, we've got a close-up image of a finger with a metallic foreign body, apologies. Um, and on the right, we have an image of the cervical spine here. So there are many different uh, parts of the body, particularly bony parts of the body that we can use X-ray to image. We also have uh, X-ray of soft tissues like mammography, making images of the breast for screening and for uh, diagnosis of symptomatic patients. So as a radiographer, um, you could work in somewhere like breast check. Fluoroscopy is another modality that uses x-rays, but it's rather different in that it allows us to take live video x-rays to actually watch the body in motion. So for instance, I've got a video here showing a patient swallowing a barium-based substance, which absorbs a lot of x-rays so you can see it well, and we can actually watch the patient swallowing in real time. We can also use fluoroscopy to uh, watch um, medical interventions like operations, make sure that that screw is going in the right place to fix the fracture or to look at the vascular system um, or biliary system, as you can see on this image on the left. Um, of course, ultrasound is a very different modality. It doesn't use any x-rays, but it is nonetheless a very important part of medical imaging and many people will be familiar with ultrasound in the context of obstetric or gynecological imaging so monitoring the health of uh, a mother and baby during pregnancy for instance however ultrasound is also used for many other applications and uh, particularly for imaging soft tissues but also some musculoskeletal tissues so we can see here the vasculature of uh, the, the body being imaged with ultrasound, and we can see the colors of showing us the direction of blood flow um, in the fetal heart, but we can also do that for the adult body. And ultrasound technology has really developed, and we can now see very, very clear 3 and 4D images of structures using ultrasound. And geography is a special case of using fluoroscopy, that video x-ray. Here we can see a cranial angiogram where we've injected uh, the iodine-based dye into the body to see the vasculature of the brain uh, in real time or as a video. And again, it can place any um, treatments like stents or valves and so on using this technology in theatre in real time. And the, I suppose, workhorse of the radiology department more and more is becoming the CAT scanner or CT, computer tomography scanner, which again uses x-rays as a tool to create images, but rotates the x-ray tube around the patient in this kind of donut shaped uh, structure here and produces slices through the body. So you can see slides to many different angles through the, the body with great detail of both bony and soft tissues. And we can reconstruct those images to give us great 3D views of different structures or even uh, of the, the heart and the fine vasculature of the heart in great detail. Another image that gives us great uh, detail and potentially 3D reconstructions is magnetic resonance imaging, which uses a very different technology to make those images. It uses a very large, very powerful magnet. Um, so here we can see an MRI scanner on the left. We can see an MR of the knee showing the uh, muscles around the back of the knee very nicely there and soft tissues and also the brain and brain stem in the image on the right and we can even reconstruct videos from MR images so we can see the beating heart here imaged under uh, MR imaging so lots of uh, new technologies and developing better and better images all the time. Another 
way we can image the body is rather than using a magnet or x-rays, we can actually introduce a radioactive substance to the body and attach that onto a drug that is attracted to certain tissues that we might be interested in looking at the function of. So for instance, on the images on the left, a radioactive gas has been breathed in and we can, uh, or, or injected, and we can see the areas of the lungs that have greater or less blood flow. And on the right, we can see um, the skeleton from a nuclear medicine bone scan where a radioactive drug that attaches onto new bone or repairing bone uh, has been injected and it, it will show any areas in the skeleton that are working harder at reproducing bone. So if there's been an injury or perhaps, perhaps a tumor, we should see um, that highlighted there. And we can also use a combination of these modalities in some cases. So we can use, for instance, nuclear medicine scanning to look at the function of a tissue and CT scanning to look at the anatomy or the fine detail of that tissue and then join the two together to get a complete picture of the patient's condition. So um, we can see three images of uh, a body here. On the left, we have the CT scan uh, showing us fantastic anatomical detail. Then we have a nuclear medicine uh, scan showing us what areas are most active physiologically, and then we can combine the two together. Um, what will I learn if I study radiography in either of our courses in UCD? Well, first of all, you'll have to learn about the human body. So we include many modules uh, covering the anatomy and physiology, both normal and abnormal of the body. So you'll start with learning the normal anatomy of the body and normal structures. And then later in the course, you'll learn how, about how those can change and what pathologies can affect them. You'll also, of course, need to know how the technologies that would you would use as a radiographer work. So you'll have technology subjects that will introduce you to how all of these modalities work. You'll have to know practically how to carry out the investigation. So you'll have practice of radiography modules where you'll learn the techniques that you would apply in a hospital and how to handle patients. And of course, you'll have your clinical placement modules where you'll be out in the hospital learning on the ground and putting in practice all of your classroom based learning. Finally, we also have modules that focus on professionalism and the, your legal responsibilities and roles as a radiographer because we want to produce graduates who are not just competent radiographers, but who are competent and compassionate professionals in the hospital environment also. So that's an overview of some of the uh, subjects or the, that we will cover. And how will you learn all of those things? Well, we're very lucky in UCD to have some fantastic facilities for learning in radiography. Um, we have a fully functional x-ray suite, which you can see on the top left picture there in our building in health sciences. And our students will get some hands-on experience with that before you set foot in a hospital. So you've had plenty of time to practice um, before you've got a real patient in front of you. We've also been very fortunate in the last couple of years to install a virtual reality system, which allows you to practice, you can see in the top middle there, um, both on your own computer and also in our virtual reality, 3D virtual reality suite in UCD um, with our virtual x-ray room. So you'll be able to practice with no um, safety concerns for you or for any patients and uh, to get some hands-on experience in that way. You'll also have practical classes in, for instance, your anatomy modules where you'll have not just classroom-based sessions, but also practicals where you'll look at specimens and so on. You will, in any course, have some classroom lectures and they will also have some small group tutorials. So we have a blend of large group learning, but also um, smaller groups for labs and tutorials. And finally, but certainly by no means least, we have our clinical placement. So a substantial part of both courses is made up of time spent in our clinical partner sites and gaining practical on the job experience. On the days that you're in UCD, you can expect to be attending classes like lectures and tutorials. You might also have some online um, activities or computer-based activities like computer-aided learning sessions or 
um, online learning activities to carry out, but we are primarily an in-person degree. We do have a virtual learning environment that's used in every course in UCB called Brightspace, and it allows us to put up all of the lecture slides and other resources for you to use and to help you prepare and study for. Unfortunately for uh, most students, the part they enjoy the least, the exams and assessments for us to confirm your learning. But we do try to involve lots of, lots of different varieties of assessment into both the courses uh, so that it's not all just lengthy exams. When you're out on clinical placement, you will be expected to be part of the clinical team. You will be involved in the care of real patients and getting hands-on experience from the start. Our first clinical placement in both courses starts in the first year. You will experience all of the different modalities that I have spoken to you about, starting with general x-ray and fluoroscopy, and then working up to the specialist modalities as you go through the course, like CT, MRI, nuclear medicine, and so on. And while you're out, you'll also be expected to record and reflect on your experiences as you learn. And you will have assessments in the clinical environment also where your practical skills will be evaluated. We also have clinical practice tutors uh, or support staff in the hospitals. And I will talk to you a little bit about those uh, for the undergraduate degree and also will speak about them for the graduate entry degree. I would note that our hospitals are nationwide for the undergraduate degree um, and that students need to be aware that they might be placed in not in Dublin for clinical placement. So why should you study radiography in UCD versus in any other university? Well as I've already said we have some outstanding facilities. We've got the x-ray room you can see a screenshot from our virtual reality suite with the virtual patient and x-ray tube there. And we have some excellent uh, learning resources like the library and the academic writing centre and so on to support your learning as well. And in radiography, we've also got a very experienced and diverse team. So we have the largest faculty of any of the courses in Ireland, and we have people with, who are vastly clinically experienced, but also people who've been in leading roles in radiographic professional societies, both in Ireland and internationally. Uh, who have been very experienced in research, in imaging and radiation protection and so on. So we've got a really um, experienced and good quality team. And of course, we've got the benefits of being in UCD with our fantastic facilities like the uh, 50 meter sports uh, swimming pool, which you can see in our sports complex, um, the gym, the uh, cinema, the woodland walks, at the libraries, all of those wonderful facilities that we have. And we also have a great social side to UCD. There's clubs and societies for just about anything that you can imagine in UCD. But of course, our favourite is RADSOC or the Radiography Society, which is run by and for radiography students and aims to set up many different um, social and cultural and learning events for them. What is the future like for a graduate radiographer? Well, your job prospects as a diagnostic radiographer are very, very good. We have essentially 100% graduate, graduate employment. Uh, almost all of our graduates will go straight into a job. Many of them will have job offers pending their results uh, before they even graduate. So there's a huge demand in Ireland and elsewhere for radiographers, and you are very well placed for securing employment. There's also a good uh, progression structure for radiography, both in the clinical environment or in different spheres. In the clinical environment, you can begin as a basic radiographer and progress through the different levels and to uh, specialize in one or more of those specialist modalities or perhaps in healthcare IT and image management or in radiation protection or one of the other uh, specialist areas radiographers can be involved in in the clinical sites. We've also had graduates who are now working with HICWA or with vendors um, who are training or marketing new, the newest imaging technologies or training new users as well. So there's lots of opportunities as a radiographer. And there is also, there is also a great opportunity to travel as a radiographer. So a degree in radiography from UCD will uh, allow you to work in many other countries also. It's very common, for instance, for UCD graduates to take a year off 
of their work in their Irish clinical sites and go traveling to, for instance, Australia for a work and travel um, break. So that it is uh, very much an option for UC graduates also. And if you want to specialize further or to progress your education, we also offer a lot of postgraduate courses and other universities also offer postgraduate courses for radiographers uh, right up to PhD level. So there's plenty of opportunity to continue to develop. What are the advantages of becoming a radiographer? Well, you've got, as I said, great employment prospects, a good basic salary. Um, you'll have very varied working life and uh, dealing with different people and different uh, situations every day. It's very people focused, which appeals to a lot of people. I suppose every profession has its downsides. If you're working in the public health uh, care sector in HSC, there is a, a rigid career pathway uh, or incremental career pathway. So there's set grades, basic grade and senior grade and clinical specialist. And most radiographers will be involved at least for a while in working on call uh, hours and so on. Um, that does depend on the modality that you choose uh, to, to work in and the site that you choose to work in, but there can be unusual working hours for some roles. And uh, it is a specialized education. So you'll be graduating into a very specific profession. However, it is a BSc. Both the undergraduate and the graduate entry courses offer you a BSc from the School of Medicine and UCD, which can open many doors even if you did decide to change paths down the line. If you're trying to decide whether radiography is for you, then our advice would be there's nothing better than hearing directly from a radiographer or if you can, even visiting a radiography department. You're welcome to get in touch with any of us, either tonight or in uh, you know, afterwards, if you want to email us or give us a call, we're more than happy to speak to you. But I'd encourage you to also try to speak with actual radiographers or graduates also to see what's their impression of the job and see whether you think it would be a good fit for you. You might also like to contact your local x-ray department. Um, many departments are no longer facilitating work shadowing or placements um, following the pandemic. However, you might be able to actually get a visit or some work shadowing or experience in the department. And there's also many, many good online resources if you want to learn more about radiography. We do have two courses in UCD. Um, I'm going to speak to you a little bit now about the undergraduate course. So our undergraduate course is a four year degree. And most of our students are school leaver students who've just finished their leaving cert and have applied through the CAO, uh, through the competitive point system. We also have a limited number of places for mature places for mature students. Um, so if you are 23 or older and wish to apply to that course, you can. You apply through the CAO, but it's a different process. It's not a competitive process with you know, uh, leaving cert points. It is a, an application where you submit information on your background and a personal statement and so on and you uh, will be shortlisted and called for interview to compete for places and finally we also have a couple of international places um, which would be direct applications to UCD for the undergraduate course as well and of course we have our graduate entry program if you already hold a degree you may be eligible for that which is a shorter accelerated but rather intense course which Alison will talk to you more about later either way when you graduate from a UCD radiography degree, you are both of our courses are accredited with CORU, the Health and Social Care Professionals, which manages the register of radiographers. So it is a regulated profession and you must be on that register to practice as a radiographer in Ireland. But both of our degrees um, would entitle you to register on that uh, CORU register of radiographers and practice. So specifically our undergraduate entry program of which I'm the course director at the moment, we have 100 places, as I said, most apply by the CAO um, and a, a very select few might be mature or international uh, applications. The undergraduate entry program is part of the UCD Horizons program, which means that you would undertake some elective modules alongside your core radiography modules. That would be about five courses over the four years of the degree where you can choose the subject to yourself and you can choose anything that you like that fits with your core timetable. You might be interested in doing something that's very allied with your health degree and there's many modules you can choose from in health areas or in scientific areas. 
but you might also like to do something a little different and take a module in a language or in a music or in another area of interest to you. So you have the option of doing a certain number of modules in other areas as well. Um, we also have an Erasmus opportunity in our undergraduate four-year degree. It takes place in our final year, and we'll talk briefly more about that in a, in a moment. And for the undergraduate entry program, we have clinical partners right across the country, um, from Letterkenny to Cork. So we do want to be upfront about the fact that you will have two different base sites during your degree, one for stage one and stage two, the first two years of the course, and another for stage three and four. You are allowed to express your preferences for clinical site allocation, but we can't guarantee that you will be able to get the clinical site um, at the top of your list. So you do need to be prepared for the fact that you may be placed away from home or outside of Dublin um, for some of your clinical placements. Just to sort of detail what you cover in each stage of the degree a little bit more in that four year program. In stage one, it's very much about introducing the key concepts and technologies for X ray imaging and the fundamentals of the human body. So you'll study subjects like anatomy, technology behind general X ray imaging and fluoroscopy, and the practice of general X ray. Um, and your first clinical placement would take place in January, and you have another placement block in March. So you're straight into the hospital environment in your first year. In stage two, you look at some of the more um, advanced x-ray based imaging, such as fluoroscopy, uh, the practice of fluoroscopy. We can see here an image of the gastrointestinal tract under fluoroscopy. You also start to study the physiology of the human body, as well as continuing to study the anatomy of the body. And we've got various other modules, such as in healthcare IT and in radiation protection in second year. Third year is where we start to introduce in earnest the advanced te uh, technologies like CT and interventional um, imaging and ultrasound. We also start to introduce the principles of research in third year, so would, how research works and how to both consume research responsibly as a healthcare professional, but also how to carry it out. And our longest single clinical placement block is also in stage three, which is a 12 week continuous placement block. So there's placement in every year and it builds throughout, but our longest single block is in third year. And then finally, in fourth year, we continue to look at the specialist modalities like MRI and nuclear medicine. You will have clinical placement. You've also got your Erasmus period where, depending on where you go, you'll study another sub subject in more depth. And we have professional completion and legal and medicine, which both aim to make sure that you are up to speed with your professional responsibilities and roles before you graduate. To lay that out in terms of the actual modules, this is a very busy slide, so don't worry about taking in all the details. But just to show you the general structure, you can see in stage one at the top of this diagram, we've got modules in anatomy, practice of radiography, technology of radiography, and in professional skills right from the get-go. And you can see that our teaching takes place mostly in the autumn or spring trimesters. So the autumn trimester runs from September through to Christmas, and the spring trimester runs from January through to May. And there are occasionally blocks that take place outside of core term times. So for instance, the second year clinical placement block runs on into the summer trimester and uh, we also sometimes have placements that would involve coming back in August before the start of trimester or during what would be a study break uh, for some other courses. So again, not to put anyone off, but to be upfront about the fact that sometimes, yes, outside of the autumn and spring trimesters, you will need to attend clinical placement. Our undergraduate program, as I mentioned, has an Erasmus opportunity. In fourth year, we've got Erasmus partners all over Europe where you would do a 13, typically 13 week exchange. You don't have to go on Erasmus, it is optional. And uh, if you choose to stay in Dublin, you will undertake our Erasmus um, block, which is currently in cardiac interventional imaging. But you might also um, be lucky enough to be in a position to travel to one of our other partners in Greece, Scandinavia, Slovenia, Belgium, uh, many different partners across Europe and to study a specialist topic in that setting also. 
We also have many opportunities for students to engage with research in the undergraduate program. Aside from your core modules, you can take part in the Summer Student Research Awards in UCD, which is a School of Medicine initiative that's been going on for about 13 years now and allows you to take on a summer research project with an expert supervisor within or without of UCD and then to present your research when you come home. And if you're very lucky um, and have done a really good job, you might even gain an award for it. We also have a summer uh, exchange with Quinnipiac University in New York State, and we engage in radiography summer schools like the Optimax Summer School, which uh, is, again, partners all over Europe in radiography education, running a three week summer school where you would meet with students from other universities and conduct a short research project. Those research projects are short, but they have even won awards and been presented at national and international conferences. So it's a really uh, intense, but very worthwhile and enjoyable endeavor. I think that's all from me for now, but I'd be more than happy to answer anyone's questions when we come to the question and answer session. And um, thank you very much. Thank you, Rachel. Um, we're also joined by uh, Dara from our uh, undergrad entry radiography course. Um, and Dara is going to talk us through his student experience of the course. And if you have any questions for Rachel as well, if you want to put them through in the chat function, um, Rachel will answer them as well. And then Dara can answer some more questions at the end of his presentation. Thank you, Jean. I'm just going to share my presentation now. Can everybody see in here? OK. Yeah, that's all great, Tara. Thanks. Excellent. Um, do you know, it's it's funny that I'm here as a stage four final year student doing this talk because I'm getting such flashbacks from Rachel's talk there from when I was like you guys and I was at the open day and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And it's just it's funny to go full circle. And um, so I, I hope you enjoy my little presentation from my perspective of what radiography is like for student. And uh, I, I always think it's a good opportunity to, to see what it's like from our side. So a little bit about me. There's myself and my holly bops. I wish it was me right now. Sadly, I'm I'm drowning in work. It is fourth year after all. My name is Dara Bacon and I am 21 years young. And I am currently a stage four final year student radiographer, and I'm also the Rad Sock Education Officer. My loves in life include music, food, and of course Guinness. It's very important when you're uh, when you're in college. And I'm currently on placement in the clinical site Beaumont Hospital, having the time of my life. Um, my key message from this talk is the leave insert is awful but I promise you it will get better. And if you don't believe me in how awful I found it, okay, this was me on the left in the middle of my leaving cert exams. Look at me, pale. I look awful. I look like I'm on death's door. And this is me after on the right-hand side. I, I look great. You know, I'm radiant because I'm, I'm in the Amalfi Coast sipping a cocktail. Life is wonderful. I'm in radiography. So just to give you an idea of what my journey has been like uh, from the classroom in sixth year in Lucan Community College to sitting as a as a four year radiographer student, I'll just talk you through the emotional roller coaster of what I went through in fourth, fifth, sixth year. So originally I had my heart set on studying medicine and um, it was a dream from a very young age. Um, you know, I, I, it was just something I always thought I wanted to do. And I was very unsure about what a plan B might be. Should it be radiography? Should it be biomedical science? You know, a lot of the times guidance counselors can say, well, if, you, if you're thinking of doing medicine, put biomedical science as a plan B. But I actually started looking into radiography and I thought, hold on, this could be like a really interesting career. So I went to the open day and I was absolutely persuaded by Shane Foley and Jonathan McNulty. They sure know how to reel you in, as does Rachel and Alison will also try and reel you in. And I started thinking about it a lot more, but ultimately medicine was what I wanted to do. Now, results day came, absolute devastation. I didn't get the grades I needed to do um, medicine. Uh, I had had a conditional offer, believe it or not, in Queen's University, Belfast, and I missed out on medicine by 0.5% in chemistry. That is one singular mark, and they would not bump that mark up on review. 
So I was left thinking, what am I going to do? I've let myself down. I've missed out in medicine. And I was adamant that no other course would make me happy. CO options was doubtful. What even is radiography? This is my plan B. I had it on the CAO. What if I hate it? Will I get a job? What was the outcome? Success. Very, very happy with how everything has turned out. So if you don't get your plan A, it's not the end of the world because I'm very happy right now in radiography. So why should you study radiography? And I promise Alison and Rachel did not bribe me. Um, so we have an extremely diverse curriculum for starters. And I think that is actually really attractive as a degree. So if you're someone who's interested in anatomy, we have lots of anatomy. I'd say a significant proportion of our degree is anatomy based. You're gonna know every muscle, every vein, every nerve, every organ and what its function is. You're gonna know it inside out. We're gonna look a lot of physiology as well. So what are the kind of mechanisms behind different parts of your tissues working, how your nerves actually create impulses, how your heart pumps blood, what causes a muscle to contract. And we do a lot of pathology as well. So obviously after you learn what the body should look like on various scans, when things are going right, you look at what it looks like when it's going wrong. So you will look at pathology on x-rays, CT scans, MRI, ultrasound. I guarantee you that by the time you're fourth year, when you're on placement, when you take that x-ray or when you're helping someone in ultrasound or CT, you're going to have at least a rough idea of what's wrong with that person. And that I always find really rewarding to know that, wow, OK, this four years of study has gotten me to a point where I can actually, if I was able to, diagnose what was wrong with this patient. Um, there's physics on it as well. We have some medical legal, so some law aspects around like ethics, professionalism, and you do some radio pharmacy as well. Technology, of course, as Rachel mentioned, is a big part as well. Now, I know you're all sitting screaming because I said the P word physics. Don't be alarmed, okay? I have been allergic to physics my entire life. I avoided it like the plague. I hated it for the junior cert. I made sure I didn't do it for the leaving cert. And there I was on day one, sitting in my, uh, my physics lecture with Rachel going, where did it all go wrong? But don't be alarmed. It is actually very, very manageable. And it is quite... Um, it's quite fundamental. So we, we kind of only go into basic physics, the fundamentals of physics, and all that physics is applied to patients, to x-rays, how x-rays are formed. It's it's actually very interesting physics. So don't please don't be put off by physics. Like I was at the um the higher options talk and loads of you were coming up to me going, God, you know, I want to do radiography. My dad said there's physics. I don't know what to do. And I was like, no, don't worry. Don't be alarmed. It ended up being one of my best module grades in the first uh, first year of college. So, and I thought I was gonna, you know, just flunk it. But no, it's grand, Cam. I really enjoyed the module content. And there is fantastic supports from our lecturers as well. Like Rachel will always make sure that if you're finding a concept difficult, that you can find a way to, to talk with you, which can help you understand. There's also supports on campus too, where you can get some physics help. Reason two, I think it's an amazing career. It's probably one of the most exciting areas of medical advancement at the moment. Like there's so many modalities to choose from, really high end cutting edge technology. Like you will be using machinery worth millions of euros that no one else on the planet has the ability or expertise to use. And to me, I find that quite cool. Uh, you'll be doing X-ray, CAT scans, magnetic resonance imaging, ultrasound, nuclear med, fluoroscopy, catheterization lab, interventional radiology, and much, much more. And so much has changed in the past 10 years in radiography, and you'll see this, like it, it wasn't long ago since they were using film radiography and they'd be dipping it into formaldehyde, hanging the x-rays up, and then they've moved on to pressing the x-ray exposure button, and there it is, lo and behold, on the screen in front of you. So it, it really is exciting, it's exciting technology. There's even some modalities that probably don't exist right now, but will do in 10 years time. Like I know they're looking at some uh, magnet, or they're looking at kind of uh, microwave imaging at the moment in some, in some research facilities. So it should be interesting to see how that does. And with these new technologies, we've been able to reduce our patient doses significantly, have quicker patient scanning times, better quality images. That means more accurate patient diagnosis. 
And um, this is just some examples I decided to put up of different images. So top left, we have a CT image on the bottom left. It's an MRI in the middle, of course, the familiar obstetric ultrasound. And on the right, something you might not be as familiar with is nuclear medicine imaging to there. So basically you inject the patient with the, with the radionuclide, they become the source of radiation. And with that, you're able to stage cancer, see where cancer is spread. Reason three, you get to work in a hospital. The hospital is a very rewarding, exciting place. Um, you're going to see all walks of life and you're going to have the pleasure of having the most interesting interactions with patients. You're going to witness the good, the bad and the ugly. You're going to have sad days. You're going to have happy days. And it is an extremely eye opening experience working uh, in a hospital with patients. And it makes you appreciate your health. It makes you appreciate what you have. And uh, I always think that every day in the hospital, you know, you're going to see something different and it, you always come back with a, something thought provoking after. There's also a huge sense of camaraderie, like you're going to be on placement a lot. It's a very practical course um, and they increase the amount of placement you do um, every year. Like I remember being on placement in first year and um, thinking that, you know, you're on placement basically in January you've only been doing the degree for a few months but I was like I'll probably just be watching kid you not day one five minutes past nine I was taking an x-ray of an ankle of a lady who'd broken her ankle um so in A&E and I was like wow did not expect to be to be thrown in the deep end but you know it's how you learn and it's it's really really rewarding uh, also scrubs like hello we get to literally wear pajamas socially accepted pajamas to work they're very comfy and you don't have to worry about what you're wearing it's great love scrubs honestly i think we should bring in scrubs to college and just wear scrubs all the time reason four it's a decent salary for sure um like our starting salary as a new grad is now 37,382 and that's not including your on call and on your shift work so that will be increased substantially by how much you do um, the average starting salary in comparison is 29,000, so you're already nearly 10,000 ahead of the average graduate. And that's just kind of where your salary can go. You know, you can progress through your career, become a senior radiographer, clinical specialist. And then if you want, if you like the management side of things, you can become an RSM. Um, so, yes, if you're like Mr. Krabs, uh, that'll be that'll be you in a few years, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, reason five, it's a good work-life balance, in my opinion, for healthcare workers, if you play your cards right. So some modalities, they work predominantly Monday to Friday, nine to five, which is fantastic, in my opinion, for a good work-life balance. Obviously, you'll have some on-call hours, you'll be required to do those nasty antisocial shifts, but there will be plenty of time for coppers um, once you play your cards right. So we're lucky in that sense, okay? Uh, reason six, I do think our stress levels are manageable as a radiographer and as a student radiographer doing it in college. As far as healthcare jobs go, it ain't the worst. Now, not everyone will agree with me on that, but personally, I think we have a manageable level of stress. There are times when there could be lulls in the department, so you have time for a quick chat with your fellow radiographers, find out what their interests are. Um, it's not always the case, though. Um, you won't always be like this lady here in Love Island chilling out cucumbers in her eyes. Sometimes it'll be a bit more like this and suddenly there is just chaos in the department and suddenly you have hundreds of x-rays coming in and an A&E and you're wondering where it all went wrong. It's not always like that though. So reason seven, it is a challenging degree, but it is interesting. So let's not sugarcoat it. It isn't by any means a walk in a park. There is a lot of content, a lot of uh, intense anatomy to learn. Sometimes you might have some tricky concepts, might take you some time to get your head around it. Can be overwhelming, especially I found third year particularly kind of tough. You know, you're on placement from September till Christmas and you're also doing lectures online in the evenings. You're studying for your IBA, you're studying for your practical exams. Can I barely breathe? No, uh, I'm getting flashbacks because it was it was tough. It's tough. But you just need to learn how to balance it, how to balance your workload, how to balance placement, how to balance study, how to balance your lectures, exams, your part time job. It sounds like a lot. And you can see him juggling it all. That was me last year. I still am juggling because fourth year is just the same. Um, but you'll also have time, hopefully, for a pint in coppers with your mates. 
Uh, reason eight, we have a faculty who care about students. So I do think we're extremely lucky that we have a relatively close knit network in Ireland. Like radiography is a small network. Everyone knows everyone. And you can see that as a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what your opinion is. But we're very lucky to have a small enough class size and we have lecturers and professors who do want the best for students and they will do their best to help us anyway or anyway they can they encourage us they praise us they help us along and they're very approachable because we have a smaller kind of class size you know we're lucky in that lecturers might actually get to learn your name and might get to have a personal um, more I suppose more personal relationship with you than other traditional college courses which may have like 400 people in it and it's much harder for professors to get to know students because of that uh, and of course your practice tutors who will be uh, on the clinical sites which uh, will probably end up like your second mommy or daddy um, reason nine there's lots of exciting opportunities so we have Optimax research school it's like a European summer school Rachel just talked about it um, I was supposed to do this, but sadly it was during COVID, didn't get to, but one of my good friends got to go on Optimax to Slovenia and Ljubljana just there last summer and she had an absolute ball. She got to do a research project, make loads of friends. She had a really great time and she actually got to present her poster there at the IIORT, which is our re representative body. It was like a big conference and she got to have her poster there. And my other friend got to actually present at the IIORT, which is great uh, a great opportunity for a student we have erasmus to lots of different countries netherlands sweden norway portugal greece you're spoilt for choice you can also stay in dublin and there'll be lots of activities going on with the erasmus students who come internationally to dublin so you won't miss out just because you stay at home quinnipack then is an american research school and there also in the past has been some volunteering in third world countries. Obviously, that hasn't really been happening lately with COVID. It's been more difficult. But I know a few years ago they had a really interesting um, project where they went over to a third world country and um, yeah, assisted over there. And there's lots of cutting edge research you can take part in. I'm in fourth year now and I'm currently working on a thesis. And it's been really cool to see the research side of radiography because in ways we're actually quite niche uh, researchers as radiographers and radiation therapists and radiologists are probably the only people who are really looking at how we can scan people in different ways to reveal different diagnostic information about it and it's really important so it is important that you know radiographers are doing research and we're getting their foot in the door it's no longer just the doctors who are the ones doing the big conferences we're starting to see radiographers having a voice and delivering their findings and research, which is really great. And reason 10, we get to use radiation. And I might, you might think about it at first, but how many people in the world get to use radiation every day in a safe way? Like it is, it's not something that many people will ever do in their lives or ever even come close to or know of doing. We literally expose people to radiation and with that comes a huge responsibility. Um, and of course, we're doing it safely. We're not like Plankton, who is obsessed with uh, plutonium. Um, this is just a student life in ECD slide. So there's always something to do on campus, like always, always, always. Like it doesn't matter what time of the week it is, what day of the week, there'll be free pizza somewhere. There's something happening. And uh, this is just a picture of us all at Rad Sock. Uh, they organized a ball and that was just us at our free drinks before we went to Kilishi Hotel for a lovely ball. Um, there's lots of societies whether you're interested in music or sport lots of nights out there's uh there's free food always going on we have a cool cinema on campus we've an excellent gym olympic size swim pool we even have a sauna of a dad so if you are stressed and want to relax and unwind uh, a trip to the sauna might be in your cards for you and then christmas day which is the ucd christmas day i'm not talking the 25th is always lots of fun everyone wears christmas jumpers there's lots of events on campus you go into town there's usually like a the 12 pubs of christmas or something going on so yeah it is a lot of fun and friendship um which is really nice so like look listen you're gonna be spending each and every day with people on your course on placement. You're gonna to get to know them really, really well. And you know, you're on placement for sometimes up to four months and you're gonna see these people 
in their best and you're going to be cheering them on when they're thriving but you're also going to be there to help pick them up when they fall and trust me those people will be lifesavers because there will be times when you're feeling fed up you're tired you're stressed and you'll be feeling very deflated but to have someone there to pick you up and be like it's going to be okay let's get through this very important uh, and this is just a picture in the top right here uh, of us uh, the St James's crew I was in James's for first and second year with our clinical practice tutor Marisha and they gave us permission to to use this photo but um, obviously we were on placement during Covid very stressful time but that camaraderie was so important and looking out for each other and Marisha was just wonderful like a little second mommy and she used to make us fudge and buns and just make her make her day better um, and, and you need it so that is all I have from me today. Sadly, I can't stick around for Q&A, but I am willing to take any student related questions right now just for a few minutes. And please do send them in um, because it is invaluable to get a student perspective on it. So does anybody have any questions? Is there any in the chat? Thanks, Dara. That was a great presentation. <laughs> Coming up with 10 great reasons to study radiography is wonderful. Um, the questions that have come in so far, uh, Anna and Rachel have kindly been answering those. So if you do have any questions, if you can pop them through on the questions and answers section, Dara will be here online for about the next five minutes. Um, or if there's any that come through now, um, Dara, you can keep an eye on them there in the questions and answers section and we can answer those there. Perfect. Um, but that was a great print. Oh, I think we might have one already. Well, I answered out loud. Would you be lost without bio? Um, would you be lost without bio? Look, you start, you start on everything from the basics. So you will start from the fundamentals of biology. But I, what I would say is that you might have a little bit more to, to study and it might be a bit more of a, of a workload. Um, so you're not going to be completely lost, but it would be helpful to have some biological um, background. Is there much maths involved? Not at all, to be honest, like some basic addition, subtraction. Um, that's basically it. Like you're not going to be uh, using your calculator much. You can do most of it up here. Um, do you find the written exams difficult? Well, they're all flying in now. Uh, <laughs> did you find the written exams difficult? I mean, it's like any exam, you know, you're going to have exams that you felt really went your way and you're adequately prepared. Others might catch you off guard. I, I definitely think all, all exams are very much, you know, like doable. You just need to learn the content, understand the content. And sometimes it can be a lot of content to learn. Um, but, you know, you'll be fine. Um, is there any chemistry? Very little. So you cover a little bit of basic chemistry uh, in relation to contrast agents which we inject into patients to help enhance certain structures during scans it, it wouldn't be like very significant chemistry just a little bit um just a little bit about what, what the chemical is how it works what it acts on uh, you, you won't even need to really learn the chemical formulas or anything for them and um, you also cover a bit of chemistry in nuclear medicine um a little bit of radiobiology as well when you're talking about how radiation um, affects different cells and stuff there's a bit of kind of chemistry involved um hopefully that answers it but yeah i would say chemistry not that much comes and goes and little drips and drabs nothing significant would you consider radiography a sociable career is it just one patient after another without little interaction time this is an interesting question so it's an absolutely very sociable career like people often look at radiography and say, oh, you know, your patients are in and out. But if anything, that's even more of, a, of an onus on you to be able to interact with patients because you're going to see so many patients. And it's about making that five or 10 minute interaction one that the patient will remember. They need to feel safe, trusted. You need to like create a rapport with them in that time. And you will see the pa similar patients coming back 
particularly if you stay in the same clinical site, you know, they'll be coming and going, especially geriatric patients. And it depends on the modality. So like with x-ray, it might take you two minutes to take an x-ray, but with ultrasound, you could be by the bedside for up to half an hour, depending on what type of scan you're doing. And with that half an hour, you're going to be talking, you know, there's going to be lulls. You need to, like, it's definitely sociable. It's so patient care centered. It's not all about technology. Um, so no, the answer to that is it isn't just one patient after another without interaction time. Is there any way of getting into radiography if you don't do a third language? That might be a question that one of the gang might be able to answer. I'm not really sure on the admissions for it. Is it okay for only doing physics as a science? Um, I can't remember, Rachel, if you need one or two sciences for the, for the degree. Uh, just one and there's no preference for which science um, so a lot of people ask is it okay to enter without physics sorry Dara I'm cramping your style here now but with a, a lot of people worry about not having done chemistry or physics uh, my advice would be don't worry about it um, someone else asked you need to have done biology I didn't do biology and I'm now coordinating the course so don't worry it'll be fine no matter what your science is as long as you have one to get in Absolutely. And I'll second that, Rachel. Like, had not an inch of physics and I was completely fine. Very manageable. Um, are there any other routes into radiography if you weren't to get the points? Again, that might be a question that one of our admissions team might be able to help you with. How did you decide between becoming a radiographer, radiation therapist? That's a very good question because that is actually something that I found really hard to decide what I was going to put. Um, I guess my reasoning for choosing radiography over radiation therapy was I actually went, I was lucky enough to have a day um, where I was on placement with radiographers and also with radiation therapists. And the general consensus was that the radiation therapists found their job quite monotonous because they were doing using the same machine every day, doing the same things every day. And although they had a longer time with patients, like at the end of the day, they're in a different room. They need to keep still. They're not really able to interact as much with them as you might think. Um, and a lot like at least with radiography, you have so many different choices and modalities. Like I listed them all out. There's like eight to ten of them. And with that, there's even more niche areas. You know, they're hoping to bring in kind of advanced practice radiography where radiographers might be able to assist radiologists in certain procedures. We might have more of a role in reporting, hopefully in the next few years and making diagnoses. And if you ever get bored of a modality you're in, you can always train in somewhere else. So you could do CT and X-ray for a few years and then decide, you know what, talk to your RSM, say you want to go into ultrasound, do a master's in ultrasound, happy days. So that's why I picked radiography. I think there's more kind of open doors with it. Do you work on your own a lot? Um, not really, to be honest. Um, you're usually with another radiographer in the department. There's usually two of you in each room. Sometimes there'll also be a student in which you so that could be three. Sometimes there could be four of you in the same x-ray room. Um, there's a lot of teamwork, to be honest. You know, if you think about it, you have inpatients coming in on beds. You need to transfer them over to the x-ray table. That requires teamwork, a lot of communication. Um, you will be working on your own maybe sometimes if you're in theater. So during orthopedic surgeries, the x-ray or the radiographer will be performing x-ray to help guide the surgery. They'll be on their own. But again, you're with all the surgical teams. Team, so you're not really on your own maybe on call you might be on your own uh, depending on your clinical site uh, is the thesis very difficult to contend with um no i well it just depends like i love um i love the idea of research i find it really interesting and really exciting to be someone who could be finding out information for the first time i also love um writing i love scientific writing so for me the thesis was a no-brainer over doing two extra modules instead, which would require other assignments, other um, pr presentations and stuff. So I felt for me, it was more ideal. It just depends on the person. Uh, are all students required to do a thesis during fourth year? Absolutely not. It is completely up to you. There's, there's a few different pathways. Um, so in third year, you'll do an introduction to research. You'll have to come up with a research proposal. Everyone has to do that. But then you can decide if you wanna do a thesis in fourth year or not. 
Uh, do you find the course very full on or that it was mostly manageable? I found it quite manageable. There's times when it was full on and there is times when I'm like, oh my God, there's just so much content, so much assignments, blah, blah, blah. But you're going to get that. Like it's a it's a degree after all. It's a level eight degree. So with a level eight degree, it's going to come a workload. Uh, but it's all interesting. You know, when you're interested in it, you don't mind as much. Would you be performing ultrasounds on pregnant women on placement? Um, so it, depending on the clinical site in ultrasound, it, sometimes it can be the midwife or the obstetrician who does uh, obstetric ultrasound. There are some clinical sites where the radiography does obstetric ultrasound, very few. Uh, and on placement, you would be shadowing um, the ultrasonographer performing the the sonogram and if you're lucky the radiographer might let you like help use the probe and would guide your hand and stuff and um, so I, I mean i performed ultrasound on people's kidneys when i was on placement so that was cool um could you be putting a place in fire to dublin where you'd have a tough commute absolutely like if you're you could be putting donegal you could be putting Kerry, you could be putting mayo you might need to get accommodation somewhere else if you're i have a friend who lives in dublin and it's commuting to mullingar it's just the way it is. Uh, you just have to find a way to get there and hopefully it works out for you. Have you ever messed up a procedure or become unsure of how to do a certain procedure during your placements? Of course, that is the whole point of placement. It's to get experience. It's to learn from your mistakes. Like no radiographer in history has gone onto placement for the first time and taken an immaculate x-ray the first time. And if that has happened, I want to meet the, the radiographer uh, because I don't think they exist. Um, and there is radiographers who will practice for 15 years and they'll still make, mess up and they'll make mistakes. We're only human after all. Um, but you look, it's all it's all a learning experience and you'll always have a supervising radiographer looking over your work to make sure that you don't make these mistakes. And if you do, how to fix them. Um, thank you very much. I think that's everyone's questions. If anyone has any questions you didn't get to ask, feel free to contact me um, on my email. It's dara.bacon at ucdconnect.ie. That's dara, D-A-R-A-G-H. So dot bacon at ucdconnect.ie. Feel free. I'm going to have to go now, but bye guys. Dara, thank you very much for that great presentation and for answering all those questions. No problem. Uh, thanks again. And uh, now we're joined by Alison McGee, who's the Deputy Programme Director for Graduate Entry Radiography and also the Assistant Professor for Radiography. And she's also the Programme Director for Postgrad MRI and uh, will talk us through the Graduate Entry Radiography Programme. Thanks, Alison. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> OK, so after that very stimulating review of um, radiography, the BSc program, the four-year program, and the um, student's perspective of this. Um, my role is to talk to you a bit about the graduate entry program. And I'm going to highlight the main, I suppose, the main differences um, that um, make this program um, differ from that of the, the undergrad program. But the, the core concepts that have been um, outlined by my colleague and so eloquently by, by Dara in terms of an insight into the the life of the student radiographer and their work on um, on placement, etc., still apply to um, to this particular program. So I'll begin by um, thinking about why we offered a, um, a graduate entry radiography program. And essentially it has stemmed from a HSC workforce planning report that um, shows an ongoing high level of demand for radiographers in order to meet the needs within the healthcare system. Right. So there is a constant demand for radiographers. And we've also noticed over the years that many of our mature student applicants often come to us with a previous primary degree. And nowadays, I suppose it is more usual for people to perhaps consider a change in career that they don't necessarily always have to stay in the career in which they studied their initial primary degree. So there's a greater sense of flexibility and OK, I can I can change now. So in this context, the UCD School of Radiography and Diagnostic Imaging had a, a responsibility to respond to this demand and I suppose the the change in, in flexibility in career planning. 
Our graduate entry programme has been available since September 2019, and it runs in parallel with the four-year BSc radiography programme. And both programmes are approved by CARU, the state regulator. So the program title, so it's a BSc honours program, again, a level eight program according to the national framework for qualifications within Ireland. It um, is associated with 180 um, academic credits and it's studied over a two and a half year time period. In terms of the level of student engagement, it is very much a full time program. All right, so again, um, the level of student activity described by, by Dara in terms of attendance at, at lectures, at, at lab sessions, um, um, the need to undertake clinical placement, all of this also applies to the graduate entry programme. So since this won't be, uh, those of you ap applying for the graduate entry mechanism, this won't be your initial primary degree, there are fees associated with the graduate entry programme. And these are the, um, the fees for each stage or year of the programme for the 2023-2024 academic year. So the graduate entry program was essentially um, developed as an accelerated program to allow graduates from a wide range of academic backgrounds to actually study radiography with us. And we em embrace students from many different backgrounds um, if they, they want to change the direction of their, um, of their future career. The content of the program supports robust learning. So it takes you through from, a, from the, the start point, as it were, in terms of all the relevant basic physic, physical and um, clinical sciences that underpin radiography and the various types of diagnostic imaging. And over the program, you will also learn all about the um, full range of um, imaging modalities available in, um, in hospitals nationwide. Your learning will be supported by a dedicated academic and clinical team, both on campus and also on the various clinical placement sites that you will um, attend. So it's very much in um, um, a facilitated process. We are interested in, our, in all of our students and in, um, in their success at the various stages through the, the programme. And essentially, the graduate entry programme will prepare graduates to join the radiography workforce. So in terms of um, unique selling points of, of our programme are it's very innovative teaching and learning strategies, as have been mentioned already. But I suppose in particular, from the perspective of um, students undertaking the graduate entry programme, where the programme is accelerated, it's undertaken in a two and a half year period. And there is the sense that you have to sort of um, you, you have a lot to learn in terms of building the practical skills of a radiographer within a shortened amount of time. So in this, in this context, simulated learning provides excellent opportunities for students to practice and develop these skills. In UCD, students have the opportunity to do this um, while working in the clinical skills lab, where they can utilize equipment that they will also encounter in the clinical practice environment in the hospitals, for example, that they will attend on placement. They can practice setup on each other. Obviously, they don't x-ray each other. And it is possible for them also to take x-rays using phantoms that simulate different parts of the the patient's body. So again, the use of radiation is very much in a controlled and um, safe environment within the clinical skills lab. So to supplement this then, we have been lucky to attain um, um, virtual re reality hardware and software that also enhances student learning by enabling the student to do this independently, to practice the setup for a wide range of examinations, to practice the acquisition of images and what these images would look like. And simulated learning is very helpful in that it allows the student to work independently. It allows them to problem solve, to work through potential challenges, 
um, and to say, well, OK, if I continue in this pathway, what will the end result be? And because this is a simulated environment, it's very safe. There, is, there are no risks to the student or to any, any patients. So it is a very good learning exercise. And students are very much actively involved in learning. It's not all sit looking at a book or looking at a, at a computer screen all the time. So these types of diverse learning make the development of clinical skills and clinical competence among our graduate entry um, students easier to, to develop and interesting. So also in the the context of our uh, JUR program, the, the program is designed so that the outcomes mean that the graduates are able to enter the workforce. You acquire relevant knowledge that underpins the practice of radiography and the various imaging modalities that you will encounter and the technologies that you will utilize in clinical practice. You learn about and follow evidence-based practice, so understand why we do what we do in terms of our, our professional practice. Various safety guidelines, quality guidelines that relate to radiography and the various imaging techniques. Through attendance at lectures, your contributions in tutorials and those various simulation labs that I mentioned, you can apply problem solving skills to a wide range of clinical scenarios that will prepare you for the um, to enter the workforce. You will learn to competently undertake and appraise a range of, of radiographic and some diagnostic imaging examinations. You will develop high level communication skills to enable you to put patients at their ease, to work with them safely, to communicate instructions, also to work with colleagues, fellow students, other radiographers, other members of the medical and paramedical and other teams within the multidisciplinary um, healthcare environments. And you will also learn how to undertake reflective practice, thinking about what you do and why and how it can be improved with a view to the concept of um, being committed to continued professional development and that you embark on lifelong learning as a radiographer and also share your knowledge with fellow students, with other radiographers as you progress through, the, through your career. So in terms of your program structure then, so since this is an accelerated uh, program, there are several modules packed in um, in the various years of the, the course. The first year known as stage one is particularly busy, okay? There are academic and clinical modules across all three trimesters. OK, and um, so in this first year, you cover the human sciences, anatomy, physiology. You learn about the technology associated with radiography and, of course, the practice of um, of radiography across a range of examination types. And this learning is then supported by clinical placement from January through to July. During the second year of the programme, then you start to learn about the other imaging modalities that you may work in as a qualified radiographer. So MR, nuclear medicine, CT, ultrasound, pediatric imaging, interventional radiology. So you can see the diverse range of imaging modalities that you will encounter. You also begin to learn about the mechanisms of disease underpinning um, and setting the, um, the framework for the final year, the final trimester of the programme in which you undertake pathology and you learn about why and how pathology occurs, how it manifests itself and indeed its appearance on um, standard radiographs and on the various um, specialist imaging modalities that you have learned about during the second year. During the final trimester you also learn about optional skills um, working ethically and again developing reflective practice and, and a commitment to lifelong learning. So you can see that it is an accelerated program but it is a very busy program particularly the first two years of it and um, there is a requirement to undertake clinical placement during the, um, the summer months. So am I eligible? So effectively, once you hold a level eight um, honours degree in any discipline at a minimum of a 2-2 honours level, and once you have attained this by June 2023, then you will be eligible to apply for entry to the JUR programme from September uh, 2023. 
So how do I apply then? It's via the CAO and the course code specifically is DN411, Diagnostic Radiography Graduate Entry to distinguish it from the four-year BSc programme. So the typical closing date for applications, there's an early closing date, the standard date of the 1st of February, and there is a late applications date um, whereby App, um, applicants um, who submit late may be considered if there are um, places left once the um, applications that were submitted by the 1st of February have been reviewed. So what do I need to submit to the CAO? You need a copy of your transcript for each year of your um, degree, your primary degree programme, plus evidence of your actual final degree parchment. If you are currently in the final year of um, your, your primary degree programme, then obviously you can state this, submit the documents that you have available to date, and then um, upload the, um, the transcript and your final degree parchment once you, you um, attain this in the early summer of 2023, for example. You may also be required to provide a full syllabus, so compiling together module, um, module uh, descriptor documents from your module coordinators at this point might be helpful to save you trying to do this um, under pressure at a, at a later stage. It's important that you provide evidence that you've completed appropriate research activity. So typically this is a research methods module and or um, a requirement to complete a degree project or thesis, for example. So as we discussed on the previous slide, there is no need for you to complete as part of the JUR program a research thesis, because this we look for evidence of your, your research activity in your initial primary degree. OK, you um, study in the first trimester of um, the JUR program, a module known as evidence based practice, where we um, get you to study how to apply research to the profession of radiography specifically. OK, but again, we make the assumption that you have already covered the principles of research methods and research based writing, proposal based writing, for example, as part of your primary degree. And we do look for evidence of this. You'll obviously have to write a personal statement that should give us a sense of who you are and why you would like to undertake radiography in general and specifically at UCD, how this change in, um, in the direction of your career fits with your future plans or with your life experiences to date. OK, so it's important to try and, and make that real and relevant to you. Um, three references, letters of recommendation. One has to be from um, usually an, an academic member of staff from um, your, your primary degree program. Ideally, somebody who has worked with you and who can speak honestly about you and kind of knows you. Um, work experience as so somebody for whom you've worked either as part of a, a placement related to your previous degree or um, work and one other. So these references are again, should give us an important insight into your character, your um, level of motivation and um, your interest, perhaps in healthcare in general or radiography or again, something that makes you unique um, relative to other applicants to this program. And then, of course, any other documents that the CAO handbook specifies that you should um, you should upload. So how will my application be assessed? So obviously on your academic ability. So we say a minimum of a 2-2 um, two -two honours degree at level eight. We do look across the various modules you have studied, the grades you have attained in those modules. Do you maintain a, you know, high level grades? Do you, uh, you know, dip and, and, and um, rise at various time points? So we look at your, the consistency of your academic ability over your primary degree programme. We do look for evidence of your research activity. Some students choose to upload a PDF of their research thesis together with their CAO application. They upload um, 
module descriptors of any modules that um, specifically relate to research. Um, and this is particularly important if you um, have undertaken research that was integrated into other modules and is not immediately obvious from the title of the particular module that you've studied. OK, so it's important to make your research activity very transparent so we can immediately see what you've done, how many credits, what assessment you undertook, what kind of work um, you, you, you have done uh, um, relative to research. We do look for some kind of a, of a, a science background at leaving cert level, okay, for, for entry, but you don't have to have uh, just present a, a, um, a science degree as your primary degree for entry to the JIRA program. We obviously look for your motivation and interest in diagnostic radiography and specifically um, <clears throat> For, for study at UCD, and that comes through your, your personal statement. So we do appreciate that students might be applying to various graduate entry programs. So it's really important that you upload the correct personal statement to the correct program, graduate entry program for which you are applying, that you know your, your application to study veterinary medicine as a graduate student doesn't appear with your, your, your application to study radiography. Um, so you're supporting evidence as part of your, your references, and it's helpful if they can give an indication, as I said, as to your character and your desire to study radiography. We may call shortlisted applicants to interview, where we might again chat to you in a bit more detail effectively about these topics, your academic ability, your backgrounds, your motivation, etc. And while it's not mandatory, we do advise and strongly encourage you to try to visit a radiology department, even just to have a conversation with um, the manager of that department or their um, and, um, a nominated person to gain a real insight into the work of a radiographer to make sure that this profession to which you are changing fits you, okay? And it's better to find that out sooner rather than later. So in the context of your um, clinical placements then as part of the JIRA program, effectively um, you, you may attend some of the university teaching hospitals as part of an, a, an acute hospital placement, usually during the second year of your studies. You also gain an opportunity to attend a pediatric um, hospital specialist hospital. Many of the private hospitals are the main base hospitals for our JIRA students, both private hospitals and private imaging centres. So this is the range of hospitals across the, um, the country. As, as you can see, some of them are in Dublin, Limerick, Cork, um, Santry, uh, Waterford, Galway, a wide range of um, locations. And usually students get the option to prioritize their, their preferences or at least list in order of their preference where they would like to be located in the different stages of the program. And while we try to facilitate students as best we can, obviously sometimes you may not always get your first choice and it's important to be aware of that. So students need to be able to maintain a minimum of 1,200 clinical placement hours in order to meet the criteria for state registration. So it's essential that clinical time is not missed and missed clinical time will have to be um, made up. So this may delay your um, graduation if you have clinical hours to make up. So you start this clinical placement literally from the second trimester from the um, spring trimester of your first year through to the final trimester of the um, two and a half year JIR program. So it also, as I mentioned, includes clinical blocks that are outside the typical teaching term. So in other words, in the summer. So this makes the program quite busy. Um, and this is the only way that we can manage to fit in the various academic modules and clinical hours that you need to meet in order to be eligible to be added to the professional register upon um, successful completion of the program. And as has been mentioned already, your clinical placements um, at, on your clinical placements, you will be supported by UCD based clinical academic lecturers and also various supervising radiographers at each clinical placement site who will be there then to provide guidance to you and to help you structure your clinical learning on the on the various placements. 
So I hope I've given you some of some um, insight into aspects of the JER program that differ slightly from that of the four year degree program. And again, I'm happy to take any questions that people may have at the moment. Thank you very much, Alison. That was great. Uh, I know Rachel and Anna were very busy answering some questions there as you were presenting. So if there's anybody else with questions, feel, please feel free to pop them into the Q&A box and we can answer them live. Or we may have covered everything already between uh, all the question sessions. So I think we might have um, this uh, webinar has been recorded, so we should have a recording of this available to all attendees on Friday uh, and we will have it up on YouTube as well after that. Oh, we have a question coming through here. Uh, are you um, exposed well, to high levels of radiation? I might jump in on that one, but obviously um, Alison or anyone else who wants to jump in, please do as well. Uh, no, the short answer to that question is no. Um, radiographers are typically exposed to very, very, very little radiation um, in, in most modalities. And ultrasound and MRI, none, because you're not working with ionizing radiation and for X-ray and so on, the doses are monitored and they're very, very low. And in most cases would be under the typical dose limit for a member of the public. Uh, to put that in context, um, I mean, the, we're exposed to about four millisieverts of radiation every year in Ireland, just from living in Ireland and eating and drinking and breathing and going out. Um, and typical radiographer doses would probably be under one millisievert a year. Um, and one millisievert a year is what's con like consider the limit before you start need to dose monitoring for your work. So for many radiographers, the dose monitoring is precautionary rather than because you're actually expected to be exposed to say, very significant amounts of radiation. And it is, um, I mean, the EPA uh, are responsible for enforcing ionizing radiation protection for workers and the public in Ireland and uh, any um, d doses that are in any way higher than expected would be reported to them and investigated and so on. So it's very tightly regulated. Um, in terms of any modalities that might expose you to more, the, the biggest doses probably come from working in uh, PET scanning, which is a specific type of nuclear medicine. But again, they would be low and regulated um, doses. So it is, uh, it's not a very risky profession from a radiation standpoint. I don't know, Alison, have you anything you'd like to add to that? Nothing really, no, just to, just to provide reassurance that it is highly regulated and very safe. And, you know, if if um, individual personal doses even start to approximate or, or you know, differ from um, from previous levels of dose, either while you're a student or while you're a working radiographer, then they are actively investigated rather than left just, you know, to be recorded. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And we do monitor our students' doses, uh, just so you know, you would have a, a dosimeter with you one clinical placement, so you would, and you could have access to your dose records if you want them and so on as well, though, to be honest, I review those um, records for our students and typically the, the return on the student badges each time they come in is uh, like very, very low or even unreportedly low, like the, probably the most common dose reading I get is below readable levels. Um, so just to reassure you. So uh, one of the uh, participants there was thanking you both for those present the presentations and Dara too. Uh, I think at this point we've probably covered all the questions that we can for this session. Uh, so as I was saying, the recording will be available on Friday and we'll have it up on YouTube so people can share that. Thank you very much everybody for attending and thank you very much to all our presenters for great and very informative presentations. Uh, Anna, is there anything that you want to add there? You've been very busy answering all the questions. Thank you. And um, thanks for all the questions.
questions. Um, if there are any more questions, please contact us um, on our email, diagnostic.imaging at ucd.ie, and we will address all your queries. And thanks everybody for attending tonight. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Close Thank you.